everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a South African spring hair. So, let's get arting. All right, so here is the South African spring hair. Now, um, their mouths kind of loop up under their their chin or <laughs> way under their nose. So, when you're looking straight on at them, um, because of this kind of big overbite they have wouldn't really be able to see their mouth. So it creates an interesting effect in that we have all of this space and no mouth to go with it, but um, may not be as noticeable once we finish. People will just kind of assume the mouth is there. Otherwise, it, it may come off looking a little strange. So they're pretty cute. Just gonna get started. Now some of the, no the hair by the nose, you can still kind of see the pinkish of the nose, so I'm probably gonna be mixing in just a little, but we'll see how it looks and then there's some white it's got some white and it's tan so it's a mix of just a couple of colors and um, pink on the nose and on the inside of the ears couldn't see that they had hair on the inside of their ears just like always you know I'm, I'm placing strokes in between others keeping the strokes to um, a minimum. Their hair isn't all that short. It's probably a little longer than very, very short, but it's still kind of short hair, so we're not going to go very long on the strokes. And then as it loops down right, we're just going to change the angle as we follow the fur direction. Now their ears, right along this edge that connects to this backside, you know, the, the fur kind of comes over it, so there's no worry about, you know, trying to make sure that stays within the line. So we don't have to be careful as we bring this up. That hair would come over. I'm going to draw on their nose real fast, and then we'll get into the white of their... Um, you know as you do the edge sort of looping it in right like I'm not following the edge I'm coming out and then in and just making those sorts of angles it makes it a little easier to draw it and then this way we're going kind of the opposite direction of that now it would all be running into you know this section so as we get down into here we're going to taper off these lines so that it looks like it's going into shadow. And of course with skin, you know, there's no fur length with skin, so it can be as, as the strokes can be as long as you want. Up here, it's going to run into the ear. It's only once we get down into here that we're going to taper that off. Give that that full illusion. It'll, um, the shadows and highlights are really what's going to make that work. And now onto the white. Now their little eyelashes are black, as are their whiskers, so we will be using some gray. It's not going to be a lot, and I'm going to hold off doing that until the end. Now I'm actually going to start the shadows and highlights with the skin um, because in all cases the skin is under the fur, right? Even if we bring this down, the fur of this edge should be over it. I don't want to, wouldn't be that hard to reverse it and then just drag the layer underneath, but you know, if I do it now, the layer will already be underneath. All right. So I'm going to have the white source coming from over here. Like always, that means it's above and in front of, not behind or next to. And we're just going to get started. We're going to start by the nose. Now, some of this is under fur, so I'm probably going to lighten up my 
pin pressure as I bring it up into the area that, that is uh, covered just a little bit. Um, and then as the nose swoops under, it's going to be in shadow. Probably going to be a little highlight under, but not all the way. And then as it, you know, comes over here to the nostril and rounds under, this is also going to be in shadow. I'm going to do the whole ear in shadow first before I sort out the highlights. Because of the nature of the ear, right, it's rounding in light sources over here, so some of it will be catching the light on that inside. But it's going to be easier to sort that out as we go. So with the light source coming from above, What's probably kicking in as the ear rounds is going to be actually on the bottom, down in here. It's going to be a little burst of light, but not all the way to the edge, because it's rounding back out. And we just have to make sure it's tapered. Now this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just sort of um, lightly sketch it in at first. And then we'll worry about the um, highlights after we sketch it fully in. So as we're bringing down, right, as I'm creating this, first of all, the darkness on this, shot, this side should be less than on this side. This side's in shadow, so there should be more shadow. Um, as I create the shadowed effect, what, what I'm doing is just lessening how many strokes there are that bring um, bring it into that, that shadowed area, right? The, as we lessen it off, it sort of tapers it out, and we read it as going into a dark space. So, all right. So now that we have that, again, light source coming from above and to the right, so what's going to catch is the section over here because this would be flopping over just a bit, right? Like it's rounding away from us. But it's also the side on shadow. So the ears probably turn just a little bit more. So we're not going to have as much highlight as we did on the other side. I'm not really putting full pin pressure. I'm just layering up the lines. That's how I'm currently lightening this. Because I want to control that a little bit more since it's again it's on that shadowed side. Don't want to overdo it. Now the other thing I am going to do is I'm going to give just this edge a little bit of highlight. Not all the way to the edge but to indicate there's a little bit of a lip that would be catching. coming in just a little from the edge and giving it just a little tiny burst. Probably would be picking up just that little bit before it rounds in. Same might be true on this side. Come in just a little. Now we're going to start adding in that fur color. And this is full pin pressure even down into here. I'm thinning out how many lines I'm putting, but I'm still putting full pin pressure. All edges are in shadow, right? Even on the side of the light source. I know I always say that, but um, I think it's important to reiterate. And then of course underneath. And then on this side, of course, it's all in shadow. I'll probably put a little burst under the eye like I usually do. I might limit that to where the white is. Um, 
wouldn't be a lot because in theory you wouldn't really see it, but uh, I find it can help um, give dimension to a subject even if that's not something that would really be showing up because of the way that rabbits' faces are turned, or hairs in this case. Um, they're turned all the way away from the light source, so there's no frontward facing spot that would be catching the light like that. Except a little, there, there would be just because of the angle of like the eyelid underneath. But um, it will still look right to our eyes if you, if, you know, just don't add too much basically. And I'm just sort of lightly doing this whole thing and I'll connect it back in and sort out where the highlight should be. And this is just, you know, light pin pressure. All right, so now we're just gonna taper this over. Make sure it's a nice smooth transition. Anything drying will look um, noticeable to somebody. Alright, and now the white. So this is obviously going to be in highlight, um, but you know, just like I do often where I'm controlling that, where that highlight's going to be, going to fill in the shadow first and then sort out the highlight from there. It's just easier to sort of taper it in. It's much easier to add using this style, but it's a lot harder to erase out because there's some extra work you got to do. Not that it's hard, just that it's easier to not do that. Just putting this some, um, you know, tan color over the white a bit, not only to help blend it in, but to help temper the white. I knew it was something that I might have to do, I just wasn't certain. Makes the white a little bit much when I don't think they're quite that glaringly white but it also you know anytime you have multiple colors it can help to temper by making sure you're drawing into the other color so that there's not a harsh um, line which I did a little bit with the white and now I'll do it with the tan now the ears Now while on this here, you know, the highlight is going to be coming from this side. On this one, it's going to be coming more from this back side. Because of how the ears are, are turned. So I'll put a little bit more shadowing. And then we'll have highlight kicking in through here. Right, because you have a light source, so this would be catching the light. Gonna get his um his little eyelashes and then his whiskers. So they're in black, which means you know I'm doing it in gray. Eyelashes like whiskers, ooh, except you don't want to draw over the eye. Um, like whiskers, you kind of want them, you know, wispy. Not full pin pressure. Moving my arm at the shoulder. And you want to kind of bunch them up so you don't want one singular. I mean, you can have like a singular strand, but you don't want a bunch of those. And you want them to be balanced on both sides. So if you have them a little longer on one, you need them a little longer on the other. Now their whiskers are short, not very noticeable. We'll see how the gray works. It may be too dark, but um, yeah, we'll give it a go. Not a lot of pin pressure. I am kind of bunching them up. I'm putting a little more than I usually would just because the gray isn't popping through. And whatever you do on one side, you gotta do on the other. 
again, moving my arm at the shoulder. Now, on a lot of um, smaller animals, sometimes it's hard to see their eyes. So, the way that we're going to show the eye is through the light flare. I may add just the smallest hint of gray on both sides to give it more definition because that's going to be the trick is making sure it's it's clear and or bring the eyelashes down behind it a little bit, maybe the fur up a little more. But for now we're going to draw just that little teardrop shape just along the edge of the eye. Better than what I just did, preferably. On this side though, it's got to be on the right side, right? Light source coming from here. So I'm going to have that follow that. I'd have to twist it. This one we're going to create the sensation like the hair's blocking it by selecting and erasing some of that out so it makes it a lot thinner. Okay, so I am going to bring the gray down just a little and then I'll bring the white up a little. I think this eye shows it well, but we have the benefit of the light flare being on the edge. Um, this eye does not show it as well. Because it's not. Whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. Yeah, I think that does a good job of showing where the mouth is. I <laughs> the mouth. Where the eyes are. Where one of these things are. Alright, so that is how you draw a South African spring hair. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.